as the tight get it done for the first time in the regular season. First at the crib, many more to come. MGM studio and the Mike Vrabel show presented by shift four with the head coach of your Tennessee Titans. I'm Mike Keith Titans knock off the Raiders 24 to 22 in what was a hard fought game on both sides. Yeah, it was a battle it was a battle on all three phases. And you know, that's uh, that's the national football league. You have to, to play 60 minutes and you're going to have to find a way to, to make uh, some, some great, you know, plays down the stretch, some critical plays down the stretch. You made an interesting choice right off the bat. You won the toss and you elected to receive. Why? Well, I just felt good about where we were. I wanted to try to go down there and, you know, set the tone and get going um, offensively. I felt like, you know, we'd had a good week and, and wanted to get going. And, uh, and, and the players ultimately, you know, made that decision the, the correct one. All right, let's get going with a 12-pack <clears throat> of plays. It was the offense in the first half, so let's start there. Play number two, the Titans go screen pass, and Derrick Henry goes 23. Yep, took him a second to, to get going, but uh, once he was able to do that, you see a lot of guys at the second level and third level and, you know, working and fighting. Um, you know, we're going to need as many of those as we can, and, you know, we were able to, to get these guys out. You know, there was a couple times there, you know, we weren't able to get the guard out. They were holding us, but, um, you know, that's how it goes. But Derrick helped us out in the passing game and the running game the other day, and, uh, we'll, we'll need that each and every week. Five catches, 58 yards for Derrick Henry. At the end of that drive, the Titans have third and one at the Raider two. So it's third down efficiency, it's red zone efficiency, and it's a touchdown. Yep, a little bit of everything. You know, just trying to make sure that, uh, you know, I keep them honest and uh, you know, well executed. I thought that that, that was a, uh, you know, Nice job there by Jeffrey and, and Nick Westbrook, and obviously the protection there, and Ryan being able to drift and, and find uh, Jeff as he slips out there to the, uh, the front of the end zone. Jeff Swain, three catches, 19 yards, and the Titans take a 7-0 lead. It's 7-3 late in the first quarter when the Titans record their longest completion of the year, 41 yards. Well, you can see the pocket, and it breaks down a little bit late, but Ryan stands in there. Uh, Bobby does a great job of setting his angle. Traylon's running over the top. And, uh, you know, I thought that this ball was was, was really nice ball. I thought it was layered. Uh, you know, he had some defenders underneath that he was able to, to lift that ball uh, and, and allow Bobby to run underneath it, you know, catching it out in front of his eyes. Uh, we're we're going to need as many of these as we can get. And uh, it starts with the protection. Robert Woods, four catches, 85 yards on the day. That catch helped to set up a touchdown. This catch helps to set up a touchdown. Traylon Burke's only reception of the day. This was a combat catch. Yeah, it was uh, contested coverage. You know, he was able to, to be physical at the top of the route. Um, you know, Ryan throwing this thing around, you know, Chandler Jones, which, you know, it's a great pass. It's a great arm angle. You know, and I know Traylon's ready to get in the end zone here. So hopefully we can get him in the end zone next week. Hopefully that will happen soon. So score on the next play. Let's look at another play that set up a score, a Derrick Henry run that was powerful. Yep, need these, you know I mean? Rips it, you know, get guys at the second level. Um, but and, and I know Derrick's trying to find the end zone and, and he's gonna. Um, but this is what it looks like when we get rolling. You know, we can, we can get on the ball and operate and make sure that, uh, you know, guys are finishing longer than the, the guy with the ball. And you could see Nick Westbrook down there trying to do that and everybody trying to help the guy with the ball and protect him. So let's sneak in a special teams play here because it's set up points. Robert Woods returning only the second punt of his career. Well, you know, he had been working hard at it and we trust him. And, you know, the, the more you can do, could see that, uh, you know, we let that guy go. Caleb 
Farley goes to the next level, and you can see him right there getting a huge block to get us a 20-yard return. You know, Bobby understands you got to make the first guy miss, secured the catch, and, you know, really, really helped us out, and that was a huge play that led to three points there before half. Two plays later, Bullock with a 48-yard field goal. It's 24 to 10 at the half. One more offensive play because it was significant in flipping the field. Third and nine from the three, here's Dontrell Hilliard. Yeah, it's good to have him back and, and getting his his ability to, to you know, run with the football after the catch in this instance, but you know, not just a receiver, but he's done a lot of great things for us. When we come back, we'll have coaches' keys to beating Indianapolis, but first, another six-pack of plays from the defense who made it happen in the second half of the Titans' Sunday win over Las Vegas. That comes up next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show from the Bet MGM studio. This program presented by Shift 4, and we're glad to be here with you for our second six-pack. Mike said it took everybody to win this game over Las Vegas, so we got to give some love to the defense. Let's take a look at six defensive plays. One from the second quarter, there's Rashad Weaver with sack number three. Yep, again, part of that package there that led to points. You know, called the timeout after this, a huge sack. Backed him up, got the punt return. So it's great to see Weave there helping us, uh, you know, get off the field and ultimately, you know, turn that into points. Go to the third quarter. The Titans throw an interception. They back up Las Vegas, and then they really back them up on third down with an outstanding play to end the drive and force a punt. Yeah, it was. You know, I mean, this was actually lost yard. It was a sudden change on about the 30. They ended up at the, you know, outside the 40-yard line and punted. Uh, they try to slip a screen in there, and you see David Long and, and Jeffrey. You know, we talked about his effort earlier, and you know some of these things don't always show up. But he's a big man running the football, and David did a nice job. We did a good job against the screens most of the day. All right, let's take a look at a sequence of three plays from the fourth quarter, with Las Vegas at the Titans' 13-yard line. Here's Jacobs running. The Titans shut it down for a three-yard gain. Byard and Naquan Jones. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're playing pass in this instance, and, you know, they're able to try to slip a draw in there on first down. We got some push knockback there, uh, and then guys are rallying and running to the football. That's what it takes to stop them down there in the red zone. All right, so it's second and six at the 10-yard line, and here they come again, this time with Jacobs on the outside, and the Titans are able to stop him with Amani Hooker. Yep, they're swarming and we caused a fumble. You know, and unfortunately the ball isn't round. I can't tell them which way it's gonna bounce. You know, it was probably gonna go through the end zone, uh, hits Dylan Cole's foot there and, you know, goes out of bounds and brings it back to spot. But, you know, that's what you get for running the football and hustling. We're, we're gonna start getting some of these when they're on the ground. Okay, so Jacobs had had some success, but on those two plays, he picked up seven yards it leaves the Raiders with third and three, and then how about a takeaway in the end zone? Yeah, there's uh, some moving parts here. There's guys, you know, we drop back in here to some zone, change the picture a little bit on them. Um, you know, Demarcus Walker, Demarcus gets a big hit, you know, and, and, and we, we catch these tip balls. I tell you, you just don't know which way the ball is going to bounce, and guys are running to the football, and Kevin makes a great catch on a deflection. Uh, and, and, I mean, we get a couple more blocks. You know, who knows? You know, he was running well with the football, and you know, I thought he was going to stay in. Then he came out and thought he was going to get tackled, and he didn't. You know, we just, you know, finished a couple more of those blocks, and, and who knows how far he's going to go. Kevin Byard's 24th career interception. He's now tied for 10th in franchise history. The game is within two points late after the Raiders score in the final 75 seconds. Here's the two-point play. Great coverage. You know, they're going to Waller. Um, you know, Kevin's on him tight. And uh, Dylan's able to get up, get his hand involved, and, and tip the pass. And, you know, just a great way, great team defense. You know, everybody trying to help uh, keep the quarterback in. And then there's Dylan with the first tip deflection. And then Kevin, you know, is able to get down the second one. They're going to Waller right there. So one more play to survive for the Titans. We throw in a special teams bonus here as the hands team does their job to seal the victory. Yeah, I want you to watch, uh, you know, obviously, Torrey Carter, Jeff Swain, Cody Hollister, and, and Hoop. But these guys are going over there to protect him. You're going to see a big block right there by Torrey Carter. Ooh. Okay, and, you know, I mean, that, you know, Hoop's got to trust those guys to go up, catch the football, and know that they're going to protect him uh, coming in here to catch it. That's good stuff right there. When we come back, it's time to reference our genuine Titan. 
and you're going to enjoy this because he just played his 100th game. You've already heard his name a couple times, and he's getting ready to have a big week. Stay with us for more on this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. It's time for Epic Western's Genuine Titan. Could give this to Kevin Byard for a lot of reasons, for playing in his 100th game, for making his 90th straight start, for coming through with that big interception in the end zone or the batted down pass on the two-point conversion. But this week, there's an even better reason to recognize Kevin Byard because at the end of this week, he'll get fantastic recognition from his alma mater. Amy Wells has more. We know what Sundays look like for Pro Bowl safety Kevin Byer. Just look around. We all we got, dog. But like I always say, we all we need, dog. Listen, trust and believe. Trust that the man next week gonna do their job. On a recent Thursday during training camp, oh, Kevin team. Byer got a big surprise oh. from some old friends. Big hey, how we doing? Doing great. There you go. What's up, coach? that your MTSU number 20 will become the second number to be retired in the history of the university. So this Friday at Floyd Stadium in Murfreesboro will be unlike any Friday in Kevin Byard's life. His Blue Raider number 20 will be hung up forever. And based on what he did for MTSU, he earned it. 49 games, 312 total tackles, a school record 19 interceptions, a great college career. And he's added more after being drafted into the NFL as a third round pick in 2016. Seven seasons just 35 miles away in Nashville as a member of the Tennessee Titans. He's made nearly 100 career starts with 90 starts consecutively. He is a two-time Pro Bowl selection, a two-time All-Pro. He has 20 plus career interceptions. And he has led the Titans in tackles Looking, each of the last the two years. Intercepted Byard. Byard is going to be to the five. Byard looking for room to the 10. To the middle of the field, 15. Byard, 20. Yes. The mayor of Murfreesboro, who will have his number retired at MPSU. Kevin and his wife, Clark, have dived in to help as many people as possible in the community. Whether rallying on the runway to help kids fight cancer, helping families at the holidays, serving as the 2020 official spokesperson for the United Way of Greater Nashville, or making something big happen through the Byard Family Legacy Fund, Kevin Byard seems to spend more time helping people than he does harassing opposing offenses. So yes, Kevin Byard is a genuine Titan who has done a lot to make his Middle Tennessee State University proud, both on and off the field, as he does every single day. Thanks, Amy. I know we don't like to recognize players for like individual honors, it's a team thing, but this for Kevin Byard and MTSU, what a special, what a special thing all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't think of a more genuine Titan, you know, than Kevin Byard. It's just uh, what he means to our football team, our, our coaching staff, me personally, uh, captain, uh, his family. Uh, so it's a, it's a well-deserved honor. Um, and, and we appreciate everything he's done since we've been here as coaches and, and this organization. And it's great to see him. You know, be successful on the field and, and raise a great family and be successful off it. Having your number retired at age 29 by your university, that's pretty strong. That doesn't happen that much. No. MTSU's only done it twice. Now, who if, was the first one? He's a quarterback from the 60s. Okay. I was not familiar with him. Okay. Because I, I we'll was not born. We'll get that answer next week. Thank you. We'll, we'll have that. I'll know that by Friday because I'm, I'm going. The They're playing UT San Antonio Friday night. If you would like to be there to see Kevin Byard, and gosh, come see the Blue Raiders who beat Miami last week. Big upset. They'll take on UT San Antonio. This is the way that you can order tickets. You can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, big night. They're having a blackout at Floyd Stadium. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tickets reasonably priced. So if you're an MTSU fan, be there. If you're a Kevin Byard fan, be there. If you're a football fan, be there. MTSU playing host to UT San Antonio this Friday night. Kevin Byard's number retired at the half. We've got a lot more as we're going to know our foe, the Indianapolis Colts, when the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues.
We welcome you back to the Bet MGM studio, and it's time to know your foe. The Titans' foe this week in Indianapolis, the Colts, Sunday afternoon. We start at noon. Colts are 1-1-1 one, one, and one after a nice win over the Chiefs. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's a tough place to play. You know, I mean, it's hard to go on the road there and win, and, you know, they, they're coming off a great win, and, you know, both teams are, are going to be looking to, to try to get a leg up here early in the, uh, in the season in the division on each other. So uh, this would be a great opportunity for us. Got some familiar names on offense, one that's not totally familiar to the Colts because he was a Falcon. We're talking about Matt Ryan, who comes off his best game as the Colts quarterback, but he's been sacked 12 times. He has. You know, we're going to have to try to get to him and continue to affect the quarterback and, you know, force them into turnovers. Uh, it won't be easy, but, you know, it's something that we're going to have to try to do. Uses every receiver that they have, and that's a big advantage that a veteran quarterback can know where everybody is on the field and run the offense. Yeah, I mean, whether it's Pittman or Hines and Pierce has shown up, Woods, Allie Cox, big bodied guy, Doolin, you know, they're using everybody. Obviously, you know, Jonathan Taylor, uh, what he brings as a, as a runner. So it's a great challenge, and they got some veterans up front that are really good. Jonathan Taylor <clears throat> averaging 95 rushing yards per game. There you see him, a powerful, low to the ground guy who has a lot of speed. Yeah, he's got breakaway speed, but can run in between the tackles. Um, you know, not afraid. He's got patience and then burst and. You know, we have to be great with a wall. We can't jump around. You know, this guy can, can take it the distance. They have a lot on defense, too. A lot of speed. Speed. Okereke at linebacker. You're talking about other people who make plays like Franklin and then the guys up front and Yannick and Buck Gakwe. Buckner, Buckner and Gakwe, like Shaq Leonard may be out there. They got DBs that are, you know, active. But there's just a lot of speed. All you right. Know, they give you speed from all different levels. All right. So the Titans at Indianapolis. We know a lot of Titans fans go to Indianapolis. So the Titans are going to host a road rally for those Titans fans who make it to Indianapolis. It's sponsored by Old Smoky Distillery. There is a Saturday night pep rally at 16-bit bar and arcade. And then there's a game day tailgate at the Heirloom outside of Lucas Oil Stadium. For more information, go to TennesseeTitans.com. You want all the Titans fans to go on up. Get on there and go to the road show. Yeah, go to the road show. We're back with his keys after this. Time for the Nissan keys to the game as the Titans get ready to travel to Indianapolis. Let's start with one that may jump out to everybody, and that is stopping the run. Yep, it's going to be critical that we're able to build a wall, and set edges, and everybody's at the point of attack. Um, and they're not, you know, I mean, I think they're going to find ways to try to get Hines involved. He's always been, you know, a, a piece that they've liked to use against us, whether that's out of the backfield or as a receiver. But, you know, it starts with Jonathan Taylor. You know, this team wants to run the football, and then they want to make sure that they're doing that and creating play action passes off of it. So it's going to start with Jonathan Taylor and our ability to stop the, the, the run this week. Let's flip it around to the Titans side for key number two. You got to be able to control the line of scrimmage and run the ball yourself. We do. I mean, this is a divisional game, and that's our strength. That's their strength, and you know, it's uh, it's going to be a great challenge. They haven't given up many yards on the ground. They've got you know very good players, a lot of good speed, and. Um, you know, a good scheme that's going to force us to, to really uh, challenge ourselves this weekend to be prepared and, and be ready to go. But you like games like this, right? Yeah, I love Where them. it's I about mean, the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I think our guys have always responded. And, um, you know, we just got to kind of figure out who we are and, and get going in that regard. All right, so the third key then has to be about special teams. And let's see what it is handle their special teams they, core. They got a really good core. They're fast. Um, EJ Speed, Doolin, receiver, very good gunner, one of the best gunners in the league. Um, you know, Franklin, they, these guys are good special teams players. Uh, Stewart, they, they, they roll them out there. And, you know, they're going to come after us on punts. They're going to probably look at uh, Stoney and say we got to do something to, to affect him. Uh, when he's punting the football. So they're going to have some highlighted rushes. Or they got guys coming from everywhere, and it'll be you know, important that we take care of our punter this week. But it's, you've been close to a big play on special teams. We're close. That close. We're close. You know, we're, we're going to keep chipping away at it, get a big return in this punt return or kickoff return, or you know, hopefully go block a punt. 
Absolutely. Can't wait for this one. Back in the AFC <clears throat> South on Sunday, it's the Titans and the Indianapolis Colts from Lucas Oil Stadium. You can hear the game on 104.5 The Zone beginning at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown, and we'll kick off at 12.02. For the head coach, Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show. Tighten up.